Now we will we'll go to exercise three, which is Nila Zombie. Hi, Nila, who's at the other end of the of the space here. First of all, I will thank the spirits of this land to allow me to come back here. I've been here once before. That is a uh, long time ago. That was in 1971. And when I uh, got away from here, then I was very happy. And I thought that it was very good to get away from here. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and that's a long story. I will not uh, go too deep into that. But I have uh, said uh, this and I have to explain why it was so. I was... Uh, I am... Uh, Nilja's zombie. I'm also Panquit. And I'm punk I will also come back to why I'm also Panquit a little bit later. I will uh, thank the organizers of this uh, this event to inviting me here and I will of course thank this young beautiful lady who honored me with the blanket, even if I'm maybe the one here who's wearing the warmest clothes <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm from the cold country of Sabmi. My uh, land is uh, colonized by four different countries. It's colonized by Russia, by Norway, Sweden and Finland. And uh, I grew up in um, in Lavo. My late father is demonstrating how to put up that Sami tent, the Lavo. I'm also happy to be uh, have the experience to grow up in such a place that I'm uh, I had the opportunity to live uh, some part of my life in the old traditional Sami way, which means that uh, in the winter time in a love wood tent like that you are very hot on the front side and freezing cold on your back so i'm in a way a bit used to temperature change like coming here to the warm country and and also being uh, honored with a warm blanket <laughs> So that's uh, that's very very good, and uh, <coughs> I have uh, learned that uh, whatever life gives you, or whatever life takes away from you, you should uh, just be happy. My life history starts with uh, being very sick as a 11, 12 year old boy. My joints uh, didn't uh, work well and I ended up in the, in the hospital in Northern Norway in my community. Norway was then a very poor country. The healthcare was run by uh, Norwegian missionaries and this uh, hospital was also a house uh, where they kept the uh, old people who didn't manage to to live in the community and among these old people there was also my grandfather 
I, it was uh, very good for me to be with my grandfather there in this old folks' house. And uh, I got my education from my grandfather by that time. The education started a bit brutally because uh, one of my relatives were missing and he had been missing the whole winter. And uh, the summer in Sabmi is, is we have a temperature like you have here, but only for three, d three four days <laughs> each summer. And it was one of these days that they found my missing relative in the river, in the side river to my main river. And uh, he had been uh, in this uh, side river the whole winter and was of course very rotten and very, very stinky. And in this poor country they, uh, they just had a table outside uh, this um, this uh, hospital or old folks house where they put it, this uh, dead body and um, and started to undress him or rather slaughter away his clothes from from the body because they were all stuck to the rotten body that made a very 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 bad stink and uh, I was just about throwing up and I told my grandfather that, uh, come on, let's uh, escape from this very bad place. And my, uh, because of this stink. And uh, my grandfather looked at me very seriously and said, but Niljas, this is just the smell of a dead body and his cell. He's also, he was also a relative of yours, that this we can deal with. And he goes and opens the window and uh, s s talks something deep in his throat. I didn't hear what he said. He does like this with the hands and the smell disappears. And of course I was very, very, wondering what's going on, is that possible, or is this just a dream? I didn't uh, ask any more from my grandfather about that, that time, but I heard from the workers, all the workers which were working in the hospital there, that when they were walking in the corridor saying that, oh, the smell disappeared disappeared, but uh, they didn't know that it was my grandfather who just uh, chased away the smell. And uh, from that day I became very, even more attached to my grandfather than I was before. And uh, we were just uh, walking after each other, or I was walking behind my grandfather all the time. and. My job was to shave my grandfather and and uh, and be together with him. And of course, we talked with uh, with each other about the uh, mountains, the reindeers, and the family where we could not be at the moment because I was sick and uh, he was old. And I was very unhappy that I was not able to be with uh, my family on the on the mountains with the reindeers and and all that. And uh, later in the life, I have learned that everything what happens is uh, not only bad. It some life is giving something to you with, with uh, also making you uh, making you a hard time and I was also very sad that uh,
by being sick I uh, also became the last chain in the last part in the chain of a very long tradition of reindeer herders. So my grandfather and all, all the grandfathers before that were reindeer herders and, and of course uh, up in the mountains and it's not just to work with the reindeers. There is lots, there is storytelling, there is to teach the dogs and uh, communicate with the land and reindeers and and everything. It's a uh, never-ending list of that. And of course, the main thing in uh, in being a part in uh, in the traditional reindeer herding family is uh, to have respect, very, very deep respect to the land, to the stones, to to everything living and uh, and also the non-living things in the nature. And um, <clears throat> it took me a while to to understand why this uh, non-living part of the nature is also very important. And then I'm thinking about stones and which uh, they do they are called minerals. And uh, I will also come back to this mi mineral part uh, later on. Uh, and this uh, bad smell thing story led to that I became very curious that what happened, why, how did you manage to chase away the this bad smell. And we started uh, a very, very long conversation, which was every day and uh, to, to late night sometimes. And my grandfather tried to explain me. And uh, later in life, I uh, understood that uh, he was explaining me the traditional spirituality of uh, indigenous people and that uh, that became a very important part of my life later on and when i grew up to become a youngster i uh, went into the trap like most of the young people from indigenous communities uh, does. I ran into partying, smoking, and all these uh, bad things and became very careless. And I forgot everything what my grandfather had told me. But then I, uh, I uh, ran into I started uh, working as a photographer and uh, became also a journalist and, and uh, came in, in contact with people who were protesting against the huge uh, river hydro power dam project which the uh, Norwegian state was uh, doing in, in our community. And as journalist you have to dive deeper into the to the things what you're writing about and so very soon I found out that these are the things my grandfather was talking about that you have to have respect for the for the river, you have to have respect for for the land, and uh, this river dam project was meant to make a very very high dam, and uh, also 
putting a uh, village called Madze under the water. And in the original plans of this river dam project, the uh, church tower in Madze would be sticking up maybe one and a half meter from underwater. So it means that really the whole village was uh, meant to be under the under the water. And I guess uh, that uh, that woke up a lot of Sami young people that we started to talk about this and and I changed my position of being uh, just a journalist reporting about uh, these things to become an activist. And um, this activism led to that I became part in organizing a hunger strike against this river dam project. We uh, gathered a group of young Sami people from uh, three of these uh, countries which are colonized, that means Finland, Sweden and Norway. We didn't have access to the Russian side then, the border was closed. With a minibus uh, which we, which people gave us, borrowed us, we traveled to the capital of Norway, Oslo, and we put it up the Lavo, which is the, which we saw the building of, in the beginning of these images. We put it at up in the front of the government building in Norway and declared a hunger strike and asked the Norwegian government to stop this very stupid project. And we told them that we will, uh, we put our lives in, in this, that we will hunger strike until we die, if they don't stop the, the project. And we were um, doing this hunger strike very, not very long. One week we were outside of this government building in the, in the Lavo. Uh, we didn't immediately uh, wake up the Norwegian government, but we woke up the Norwegian people and especially the young people from Oslo who then started to to support us. And I guess the, the voice of these uh, hundreds and thousands of Norwegian youngsters and also young people from other neighboring countries that uh, the Norwegian government uh, decided to stop the project and and then uh, put up a, a, a commission, Sami Rights Commission. Because until then, the Norwegian government or the Nor Norwegian state was not at all um, seeing us as a Sami. We were declared as Norwegians. And uh, the Norwegian people in general didn't even know about uh, the Sami, even if we are the only, maybe the only indigenous in the whole Europe. I'm not sure if I'm right in, in that. Maybe there is more people who are indigenous in, in Europe, but uh, anyway, in Scandinavia, we are the, are the only indigenous people with our own language, not just one language. We have a, a whole series of, uh, of Sami languages, but that's uh, 
a too long story to, to start telling about. I will uh, try to keep keep on on online on this, uh, so the story becomes a little bit. Uh, uh, I have a red thread in the in the story anyway. And um, there was uh, they uh, put it up, uh, Sami Rights Commission, as I said. This commission worked for 18 years. And I guess that was to, to, to use the time to make my generation old. From young people to, to adults and maybe they hope that as adults this uh, young people will not, uh, not be so radical anymore and not ask for some, so many rights. And uh, anyway, the result of this uh, 18 years of uh, commission work, they established uh, something called Sami Parliament, which we are electing every fourth year. And the Sami Parliament uh, I was very happy when I heard that uh, now we get the uh, Sami Parliament. And I was uh, so much disappointed when I realized that this Sami Parliament is a victim for democracy. I know that uh, to criticize democracy is not a very good thing. But I unfortunately have to do that. Because democracy means the, the big crowd is deciding for the smaller group. And when you belong to a minority, the big crowd is always deciding in behalf of you, in the name of democracy. Norway is a trying to make an image of itself of being the most democratic and nice shiny country who is also taking very good care of its um, indigenous people, the Sami people, by having this, uh, this nice uh, Sami parliament. And uh, until now, I have also been uh, been going to the election and and uh, giving my uh, vote to this Sami Parliament. Uh, soon we have a new election, and I will not be going there anymore. I will stop participating in. Uh, election to uh, Sami parliament, which they are using to only to shine for themselves, because my Sami parliament doesn't have any power to, to make any political decisions. Norwegian uh, parliament will always have the the, the last decision to, to decide. <laughs> and, um, and I see from my images that my time is always almost over, but I have to explain why I said that I'm also punkwit. I was uh, this uh, this process with the protesting of this uh, river dam project was um, also led that I in a period of time became known as the worst terrorist of of Scandinavia, and as as I heard. 
when we were coming in, somebody was saying, we are not terrorists, we are good people. And I also say the same, I'm not a terrorist, I'm a good man. And, um, but I had to go to protect my land because they just stopped this uh, river dam project for a period of time until they uh, started uh, this uh, Sami Rights Commission. So they anyway built the dam. And uh, the Norwegian Supreme Court, which also belongs to the, to the democracy, decided that the Norwegian uh, state company have the right to, do, to build this dam and the Sami people have no right to ask for any rights before the, anyway, before the Sami Rights Commission have done its job and until the, the, the state process have uh, made the Sami rights uh, clear that to the, if the Sami rights have, Samis have the rights, political rights or not. So me and uh, a small group of people, we uh, decided to talk the same language as the, as this, uh, this uh, Norwegian politicians and the authorities are are do, doing, My, uh, and that means the the heart language. We made a symbolic explosion under a bridge leading to this um, construction area, and uh, it was uh, never in our mind to to destroy anything or to to kill anybody. I lost my hand. You see, I have a arm prothesis, and then and I lost my. Uh, left eye, I have a glass eye on this this side. I'm very comfortable, I'm uh, with this, I'm uh, not complaining, because uh, this uh, action led to a very good process and very good action. I was uh, put it in jail, totally isolated, kept in jail for uh, six months, just uh, totally alone, not uh, communicating with anyone. And I was then a young man, and I thought that I will, I don't want to rotten in jail, and they were threatening with, with the strongest paragraph in the Norwegian law, which is, um, which can give 21 years in jail, and they were preparing to to do that, to make an example of my that you don't uh, you don't uh, fool around with uh, Norwegian decision makers. So I had to start fighting with uh, Stallo. Stallo is. Uh, in our culture, the the very bad guy. It's uh, a ghost, but it's also it can also be a very bad politician, <laughs> and it can also be the jail guard, which is very mad. And uh, in uh, my culture, there is uh, seven different stallo you have to to fight against. Some of them can also be a very good looking, smiley women, but you have to know that it is a stallo. You don't uh, involve in that. And there came a very nice stallo to my jail room. Jail cell, it's called, it's not the room. And uh, because I stopped eating, and I th thought that I have to trick these stallos because the stallo is always more 
it's not that clever as as us we are always more clever and and we will always survive and um, so the there came in a very good looking women saying that I'm here to talk about your problems to solve your problems and I had with a very bad feeling I had to say to these women that how can you solve my problems you don't even speak my language and how do I know that you are not sent by the secret police to try to fish out uh, my plans of, of survival this uh, young poor woman started crying and had to go out and uh, that was very good also even if it uh, also hurt hurted me a little bit I, it, I didn't do it with good feelings but you have to fight the stallo with different uh, methods the next day came my good friend which is my from my uh, neighboring village and uh, he's a Sami doctor and he was the only Sami doctor they could find at the time and I didn't know that when you are uh, hunger striking or being without food in the Norwegian jail they are they have to do it there is a law saying that you cannot uh, just let people starve to death in in a jail and the jail director uh, was also there asking are you hunger striking I'm not hunger striking and uh, I had a very good luck then uh, some uh, plumbers just happened to come in the etage under started starting to drill the water pipes so I just uh, made a hint to this director of the jail and I said that listen what they are doing there with my water pipes it means I have to stop drinking water also and uh, it was a clear hint that my point was to to in a way say tell them that they are trying to poison me to death so they don't have to take me to the court and um, then comes this uh, Sami doctor saying that they didn't find any other doctors here so they just had to send me here I know what you're doing and uh, and uh, just keep on doing the, what you're doing I know you have a good plan mm -hmm. and just be aware of one thing that when you're trying to trick others you are the first one to to really be tricked so be careful tell to yourself that you are not being poisoned and and drink your water but do it in in a secret way tell to those to, to be you also have to be more concrete tell them that you saw that they are poisoning you that I used to eat some oranges every day one orange to survive which I was able to buy from the kiosk with this certain jail system and then I said that okay I cannot speak any more to you but there will come I will send another other man here a psychologist don't tell him the truth he, but he's a good man anyway he will save you <laughs> and uh, so he went away and uh, when he went away I ring the door the, the bell which is there the ringing clock when you are go to go to the toilet and uh, there came a jail guard opened the door and and then I can go to the toilet which is in the in the corridor 
and uh, I just uh, went uh, very quick to, to the toilet, came back. The door is uh, not immediately being closed. The cell door there is, uh, takes a few minutes before the jail guard is back, always. So I took my bag with oranges, threw my way in the corridor, and went to the into the cell jail again. Jail guard, another stallo comes, very mean, saying that, why are you putting your, why did you throw your oranges in the corridor? And come and pick them up. I went to the corridor and I kicked to the, to the one orange. I'm not a football player, but I got a very good kick, so the orange just exploded in the, in the roof. And uh, I have never been uh, a shouter, but I shouted to them, just pick your poisoned oranges up yourself. Don't you, don't you think I saw you were injecting them with the poison while I was sleeping? And then I went into the, to the cell again. And then I knew that, no, I have the process of getting loose from this, um, this jail going on. And uh, after a week I was out from the jail and um, the, the, this uh, very good man, which my Sami doctor friend sent, had been communicating with the authorities, which, had, uh, which then had to conclude that we have to let this uh, terrorist out from the jail into the court case comes. And, um, it, uh, it will not help to, to move him to a hospital. That, uh, that will just be to transfer the, the problem from the jail to the hospital and nobody wants this kind of people in there. And there came, um, so I came out from the, from the jail, but I still had, uh, still had guards secret guards watching me, also Stalus, that was uh, in a way a Sami policeman. But I have to really make this uh, story very short and to come to an end. And uh, I then, uh, my friends uh, organized a trip to me to Canada where the First Nation people were, were uh, waiting for me to take care of me. They warned me with a blanket and protection, hided me. And uh, I ended up in uh, staying in a long house with a very wise man who was uh, then starting the process of making the traditional Indian spirituality alive again. And he started examining me because they, they didn't really know what kind of indigenous white people are coming. They are saying that they are indigenous and, and so on. So they had to examine me. And then my grandfather's education came very, very well to use and uh, he had uh, a month every day conversations with uh, with my host man in the long house where we talked about uh, indigenous spirituality which happened to be exactly the same values as my grandfather had told me and uh, we went into sweat lodges regularly and uh, and the end of that was that i was then adopted to seven different uh, first nation group 
people in uh, in BC Canada and I'm very very happy that this young woman comes with a blanket honors me here she belongs to one of this uh, these groups and there is also another young beautiful in the First Nation lady who is also involved in this uh, this uh, process and I'm very very thankful for for them that they are here that blanket really 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 warmed me and protected me thank you very very much thank you